Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple kayak crate, which, you know, there's lots of ways you can do this. I just, I like this design. Um, this has been through some trial and error of what I've designed. And I designed this with a certain purpose in mind. So before I get into how I built it, here is my thinking on what I wanted. First thing I wanted was I wanted something that was bright, something visible. My kayak is yellow. This is orange. It sticks out. I'm also a boater, so you know I know how that is with people in kayaks, and you definitely want to be visible. So I wanted something bright. This happens to be orange, and it's from a local retail store here in South Jersey. I was able to get a couple of these from a friend of mine, that uh, and they didn't mind giving them to me. You know, so I didn't pay anything for the crates. You guys can get these crates for free, no problem. Most places will give them to you. So a lot of them are black. These happen to be orange, and I'm fine with that color. So that was my first thing. My second thing was I didn't want it to be too tall. You can obviously just take one standard crate, like one of these, and just shove your gear in there and the top is open and a lot of people do that and there's nothing wrong with that. I wanted something where I had a tray on top and had a way to secure my gear underneath. So, and I didn't want it to be too tall. So my first design, what I actually did was I just cut the top off of one crate, set it on top of another crate, and I had, you know, essentially a tray. The problem was it was too tall. It was too tall for me to reach behind me and grab where my seat was. And it lifted everything up. It lifted the rods up. I really didn't want it to be that tall. So I redesigned it this way. So let me show you some of the features of this. Um, actually, before I get into the features, let's talk about my third purpose. My third purpose is a very important one. So my original kayak crate that I had was one of those fabric bags. It's like an insert, went inside of a standard crate. Very nice design. I forget what brand it was. This was years ago. What I didn't like about it was every compartment you had to unvelcro or unzip. Um, it, when, when they got wet, it was a mess. It was hard to keep clean. Um, I fish salt water a lot, so it's essential to keep things clean. So I essentially wanted something at the end of the day when I've had a long day fishing and I'm tired and I just want to put everything away that I could just hose down. This simple design is no problem. There's nothing on here that's going to corrode. There's nothing on here that matters if it gets wet. The gear I put inside there doesn't matter because I use like a Plano 30, 3600 style box and water doesn't go inside of that. So that was my thing. My three big things was I wanted it to be bright. I wanted it to be um, something that wasn't too tall and I wanted it to be easy to clean and easy to maintain. All right. So this fit the bill for everything. So first, before I even talk about any of the other features of it, the way I designed it was real simple. I took two crates, all right, and um, it's essential that you probably get two identical crates, okay, because they fit well inside of each other. This is the bottom of one crate where I cut the top portion off and I cut the front off. So basically, I, it looks like this. I angled the front and I just cut right along the rib lines of the plastic that was already there. This plastic piece right here is actually right there on that side. If it was still there, I cut right down the line. I did all this with just a standard hacksaw, okay? Did the same thing over here. And then the part that I cut off here on the top, if you look at this crate, that was all of this mesh right here. I cut right along this line all the way around. So I had a nice straight line to cut with. The bottom of this is still there. You can see the wear of it. That's the bottom of the original crate that was used. So by doing that, then I was able to take my second crate and cut off the top and make a tray. So I cut right along the line, all the way around, nice and straight. Um, you know, again, a hacksaw does a great job. And when I stick it in here, it worked out perfect. Uh, the only thing I had to do was, when I originally put these fishing rod holders on there, I had to strategically place this piece of wood so that it wouldn't affect the lip. It actually works out really well because when you stick the top in there, it actually locks in place. I mean, it fits like it's designed to fit there, like it came that way, okay? Goes in and out, no problem. You can do this one-handed. Um, the other things I added to it was I added a piece of paracord, a piece of bungee right here. I notched out the top, and I made this loose enough to where I could just reach back with one hand and easily close it. I'm not the most flexible person, so... For me, it's essential that I can just kind of turn around and reach. If I don't want to swing my whole legs around, I can just reach back and grab no problem with this. Um, so that takes care of that. Now, 
The other nice thing about this design, if you had gear in it, it's not going anywhere if you tip over. My original design was, uh, if I ever tipped over, I didn't want to lose all my gear. Um, you know, and in all the years of kayaking, I've probably been kayak fishing now for 15 plus years, I've never tipped over fishing, but that was my original plan. What this evolved into was, it evolved into um, the inside compartment underneath is where I would store the gear that I'm not necessarily going to use right away or I may not even use that day, like something I would bring extra just in case I change, change course or change patterns. And the stuff I put in the top tray here that's easy to reach is the stuff that I'm mainly going to fish with, okay? So that's my design. The fishing rod holder on the back, um, it's a simple three rod holder. They make these, you know, black and white. These are, you know, cheap ones from, you know, just you can get them online, Amazon, any place like that. They do have places where you can hold pliers or knives or anything. I don't use them because they're in the back. I'd rather have that stuff right there where, where I'm at. Uh, but what I do with these three rods, these would be extra rods that I may use, you know, maybe if I carry something a little bit lighter, a little heavier that I'm not planning on using right then and there, but I may change to, I put them back here. They're in the back of the kayak. I can reach them no problem, but it's not like I'm going to be getting them constantly to fish with. The ones I'm going to fish with, I put right behind me in, in my actual rod holders. Okay. On the side, I added a uh, Scotty mount, and the reason why I added that was for my Scotty light pole. So I take my light pole right here, just a simple twist on and off. All right, twist it to turn it on. There you go. And it's a traditional Scotty mount. You guys know how the Scotty mounts work. I'll show you that on camera. It basically goes in, you twist it till it locks into place, and then you can turn it and lock it, and it will not come out. So there's my Scotty light pole. Uh, I don't use that really for night fishing. I, I don't go out on that, that much at night in the kayak, but if I go out early in the morning, I like having this on there just in case there's some fog or anything like that. And again, it makes you a little more visible, okay? So let's talk about how the gear works. As far as the gear itself, if I was to load this up for the day, you know, again, I use like this style box. These are these are like a waterproof box. I believe it's a 3600 size Plano. There's different brands, but that's the size. Okay, I can easily fit six of these in here. All right, so let's say I put, I'll put four in there for now. You can see how much space there is. No problem. Okay, with that. And the nice thing is, is the height of it, I didn't have to go real high. I could keep the crate itself low. So even with them stacked tight, they're probably about an inch from the top. Now when I stick my top tray on, like this, all right, that gear is now secure. If I bungee this down to the back of my kayak and the tank well, if I tipped over, it's not going anywhere. If I need to get to it, I can easily get to it. Now the stuff I'm gonna fish with that day, let's say I take that container, I'm pretty organized when it comes to fishing, so I kind of have my stuff in the boxes that I want to fish with. You know, that's say I was fishing for stripers that day, and this is my little striper box that I have certain gear in there, rigs, things like that. I would put that right here, easy to grab. You can put any other gear in there you want, you know, something like that. And this is what I could easily reach if I had to change, change anything. I don't have to dig in there, I don't have to find it. It's right there on top. So that's my whole crate. It works very well. At the end of the day, when I load up my kayak in the back of my pickup truck, um, you know, I can take this right out of the tank well, throw it in the back of my truck, you know, where it's secure. And when I get home, I can just hose all this stuff down and I don't have to worry about it, you know, holding moisture or being corroded or anything like that. It just seems to work out very well for me. You know, again, I think those of us that fish on kayaks, we learn how to maximize our space. And I'd rather have it like this, where I don't have all the gear around my legs. My kayak's a little older, so I don't have room to store lures and things and boxes underneath my seat. My seat is flush against the bottom of my kayak. So I'm limited on space up front there. I'd rather have the space back here where I put everything. Now, another thing you can do, I just grabbed a simple fly here to show you for example. You can drill holes in the top of here as well. It's another nice thing about using a crate like this. You can just customize them however you want. You can drill into these. It's not going to do any damage. You can see I drilled holes on this side because the original crate I used, I used the holes in there to basically hang lures and rigs. So 
I didn't do it on this side, but if I wanted to, I could drill some holes on here. And again, I could hang lures right on there. Um, you know, as long as you have them to where they're out of the way of the paracord, you're good. Uh, if you wanted to hang them here on the side, you could put them there. Reaching around, you're not going to have any problem getting there. And you could put some holes around here, hang stuff, and have everything right there easily at your fingertips. Okay, so this is my design. The um, reason why I'm showing you guys, I was actually out fishing the other day, and I had a gentleman when I was launching the kayak ask me about it. He was looking at my kayak, and um, you know he couldn't believe how old it was. I had it all, I have it all rigged out, just like the new ones. It works perfectly well for me. Um, you know, and he was looking at this, and he asked me basically where I got it, and I told him that I made that, and he was asking me about it. So I figured, why not share it with you guys? You know, if you're interested, anybody can make one of these. It doesn't take that much, you know, technical ability to do this. It's just simply cutting apart two crates and making it fit for your for your needs. Okay, so um, over the course of the winter, I plan on putting some how-to videos out there. You know, my boat is winterized right now. I, I don't run that again until early March. I may get out on the kayak a few times, but over the course of the winter, adding some videos to my channel, I plan on doing some how-to videos like this. It gives us fishermen something to do in the winter time while we're you know chomping at the bit to get out there and go fishing. So. You know, if you, need a, if you need a kayak crate, this is a great design. It works very well for me. Um, you know, if you need uh, in instructions on how to do it or if you need help, I have an Instagram page that I'll put a link on here too. You can message me there. You can message me right here on the YouTube link, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, if you like these types of videos, please subscribe to my channel. Please click like if you, if you like them. You know, I'll try to keep these things going. And, um, you know, get some more how-to videos and keep learning just like you guys are. All right? Thanks again for watching. See you next time.